I want to share with you about super cold hardy apple trees. One of them actually goes all the way down to zone one, so at least negative 50 degrees. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And if you end up liking this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, hit the all so you don't miss a single video. There are all kinds of apples out there. Some, you know, will last just a little longer than pulling them off the tree, but some varieties actually, like I said, can last an entire year in cold storage. And so we want to talk about this, but I also want to talk about, you know, here's a tree called Wolf River. Wolf River is more of a apple pie kind of a tree. They grow giant, massive apples, and they're, they can be good for doing things maybe like dehydrating apples and these kind of things. So you have your dehydrated apples through the winter. But I want to explain to those of you who are new to apple trees, I want to give you a little insight on how apple trees grow. You might think, oh great, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll take the apple that I bought from the store, my Honeycrisp or whatever variety you like, and you think, man, I'll just save the seed, plant it, and then I'll have a fantastic Honeycrisp tree growing on, on my property. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, it sounds great, but that's not how it works. You see, when you take an apple seed and you plant it, you have no idea what you're gonna get out of that. Well, you're gonna get an apple, uh, but you don't know what kind of apple it is. And it's gonna be, actually, you do know, it's gonna be a brand new variety and you can name it whatever you want. Because if you plant a seed, you get to name that tree. But here's the thing. You have about a one in 40,000 chances of getting a good variety that you would actually want to keep. So this is the way it works. So when, when apple farms come up with a new variety, this is what they do. They typically take, let's say they take two trees that they really like, they plant them near each other, they pollinate them together. So let's say they have, I'll give you an example. So Honeycrisp is very popular today. What they did is they took Honeycrisp and then they took Fuji, which is another popular variety. Both of them are nice and crisp. Honeycrisp is more on the tart side and it's also very sweet. And then Fuji is more on the very sweet side and also stores very well. They're both pretty good stores. Fuji is even better store. And what they do is they take the pollen from one tree and they put that on the other tree and then they save the seeds from that tree that they pollinated. They know exactly what it came from and then they plant them. And what they did in the case of this is they did this. They did this exact, exact same thing. They took the Honeycrisp and the Fuji, pollinated them together, and they planted 50,000 seeds. So you can imagine how much space it's going to take to, to grow 50,000 apple trees, hoping to get one good one. And that's what they got. And they got one apple tree that is just fantastic, super tasty. And you may have heard of it. Maybe you haven't. It's pretty new. It's called Evercrisp. And Evercrisp can last... It's super crisp. It's even more crispy than Honeycrisp. I mean, significantly. It's like, I mean, it's uh, almost too crisp, although I, I thoroughly enjoy it. It's a fantastic apple. And so what they did was they, they got this one out of 50,000 trees that they said, that one's really good. The great thing about it is it also has very little disease. It's super cold hardy. It's actually like a dream tree, Evercrisp is, but it's still under patent. So if you bought one, you have to pay yearly like a I don't know, maybe 50 cent royalty every year you have that tree for the first 20 years. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, if I ever bought one, I would probably want to maybe see if I could just pay the whole thing out front because they're, they're, they're expecting that you're not a, a, a home gardener. They're thinking instead that you're a, a you know, farmer that's selling these things on the market. And so that's what you have to do. For 20 years, they get the rights because they have worked so hard planting 50,000 trees. I mean, they probably deserve it, right, for all they've done. But regardless, that's how it works. You don't know what you're going to get. So you can plant it if you want. Uh, you know, you may not want to, but you're saying, Chad, you're getting way off the subject. I am. So let's get back to what we're talking about here. A few other things. So the way that you get, if I wanted to grow on my property the Evercrisp tree, I would have to buy one and bring it here. Or I could go to a tree that is an Evercrisp tree and I could cut off a little portion of a branch like this and I could cut that off I could bring it home you know maybe keep it wet and some some paper and uh, just kind of bring it home and then I could cut a section off of this tree and I can literally connect them together tape it up maybe put some pitch on there to hold it in place and what will grow out of the rest of this tree will stay and it will remain Wolf River, which is what this tree is here. And the part that grows out of this branch will end up being an Evercrisp apple tree. That's actually how we get 
varieties like Honeycrisp and so forth. Somebody had the original Honeycrisp tree and they began to cut off so then they would plant a seed, another seed, and it would grow up and as you get that little little you know sapling or that little seedling growing up you cut you cut the top off and you put the, on top of that a little branch of a honey crisp and that the rest forever that tree everything above that graft will be a honey crisp tree that's how we get apple trees and honey crisp by the way are a pretty cold hardy variety i have a couple growing over here uh, behind me to both to my right and to my left here they are cold hardy varieties but we're going to talk about this a little bit another thing to consider if you're growing in the far reaches of the north that you have an option just like everybody else when you buy a tree you either buy a dwarf tree a semi-dwarf tree or a standard root tree and they are all grown to size based upon what root stock they have so to give you an example there, if they, if they planted a seed from what is known to be a small or a dwarf tree, then if they put the Honeycrisp on there, that Honeycrisp tree will be a dwarf. If they took a standard root, which grows to full size, and they put a Honeycrisp on it, that Honeycrisp tree would grow to full size, maybe 30 plus feet. And so, but you think, okay, so I can just buy it based on the size that I want it. You can. So if you live in you have a small backyard or something and you want to grow two apple trees, then you maybe would grow a couple of the dwarf trees. But here's something to think about. Dwarf trees are dwarf because their roots are weak. And because they are weak, they are not as strong. And dwarf trees often may not do as well in the very far reaches in the north. So this is something to consider. Having a standard tree in the north, actually, if you live far enough north, it probably will never grow to 30 feet tall because it just doesn't grow as tall in the far, in the far regions in the north. So that's something you really need to consider is that if you want a strong tree further north, it's probably better to go with a standard root tree. That's gonna grow to full size, but will probably never grow full size, but it's actually gonna be a stronger tree. There's one particular variety that comes from that it's a root stock that comes originally from Russia and it's called Antonovka and this particular variety is very it's considered to be cold hardy so some of the further northern regions of the United States and into Canada might want to use that particular variety for their root stock another thing to think about root stock is dwarf trees often will not live as long as the standard root trees. Now, if you're only gonna be somewhere for a few years, you may not worry about that. But if, if you're thinking about, hey, I, I don't know, I may live the rest of my life on this particular property, and I might have 20, 30, 40, 50 years if, well, if everything continues on as it has been. And so if you do that, you plant that, uh, if you put in a standard tree, it's probably going to outlive you, uh, barring some kind of natural catastrophe or some disease that strikes your tree and kills it. But you know, the apple tree may far outlive you if it is a standard tree versus if you have, hey, it might last quite a few years as a dwarf, but it's more prone to not living as long because it's got those weak roots. So I wanna talk about some of the different varieties that you could grow. I'm gonna give you a couple different websites that will help you look up some cold hardy trees that might work for the region that you're in. And once again, if you, if you wanted to do something like this, you doing the actual grafting yourself if you if you're interested in that you can actually there's tools that make it easier i have a dis, one in the description down below and uh right in the description of this video and so if you want to learn from that you can get one of those particular sets and like i said you could on this tree i could i could cut off a piece from a honey crisp and put it here i could put a ever crisp here i could hit put a minnesota 1734 over here a red delicious over here and i could have all of these different fruit trees coming out of one tree. So if you had a small area, but you liked the diversity, you could actually do that with just two different trees. The other thing to consider is, if you only have one tree, you may not get pollinated. Just like a woman doesn't impregnate herself, so too with apple trees, you actually have to have two trees and they need to flower at the same time. So if there are no apple trees in your region, you only plant one, you're very unlikely to get any apples. So you wanna have two different fruit trees, not two different fruit trees, two different apple trees growing near each other, and they also have to flower at the same time. So if you're looking at two trees that you really like, do make sure that you look up that they will generally be pollinating at the same time.
Now I'm standing here next to my newly planted ash meads kernel. Now ash meads kernel is cold hardy, but not really one of the colder of the hardy trees. Ash meads kernel is considered to be one of the best tasting apple trees in the world. It comes originally from England and it's loved over there. It's not as popular in the United States, partly because in the United States, our commercial varieties are varieties that are only pretty. And ash meads kernel is not particularly pretty but is said to have some of the best flavor in the world. Another benefit is for some people at least, it can store anywhere from maybe three to eight months, depending on how you store it. So you could have fresh apples, depending on how you do it, potentially eight months down the road. So you could have fresh apples throughout the entire year. Another variety that I have just behind it here is a Fuji. Certain Fuji can last up to a year. They are also can go down. Some of the Fujis can go at least down to zone four. Now zone four will get you down to about negative 30. And that typically is about the max that this region has ever gotten down to. So this is not super cold hardy. So you're thinking, Chad, I wasn't thinking zone four. I'm thinking zone three, zone two, zone one. We're going to talk about ones that go all the way down to 50 degrees or more below zero. And we'll get to that in a moment. But here we have some, like I said, zone four. I do have, I have, zone, I have at least one that goes down to zone two, but some of them go all the way down to zone one. This right here is an apple tree called Frostbite. It's in a tree tube, and that's because I haven't had the chance to put a fence around it. I will do that hopefully this winter or early in the spring so that it'll be able to grow well. The branches will be able to grow out next spring. But this particular tree is a zone three tree, which means it goes down to upwards of maybe negative 40. So that would be about the max that it's going to, somewhere between negative 35 to 40 degrees. This is said to have the flavor of sugar cane. So super, super sweet. So if you like your apple sweet, the reason I'm actually going for more sweet is because I found that sweet fruit is less hard on my teeth than sour fruit. Normally people think, oh, sweet's bad for the teeth because it can turn acidic. There is some truth to that, but I actually find that acid is harder on my teeth than the sweet. So I'm going for, I actually I have multiple of the more tart varieties also, but this is more toward the sweet. So I'm going to try that one out just to, just to give it a try. This one's actually a grandparent of Honeycrisp, but it never became very popular, but it is also a pretty cold hardy tree. This little variety growing in here is called the Minnesota 1734. Often when they are grown at the universities where they often come up with the new varieties, they actually just give them numbers until they give them flavors. This one is a russet apple, so it's gonna grow with a brown skin. It's a smaller apple, but it's said to grow very, very well. And it's said to be one of the best russet apples. This particular variety can grow all the way down to zone two. So you're gonna be pushing negative 50 degrees at this point. You're gonna be, this is an apple tree that could grow in many, many localities. Now, one of the things I want you to think about though, if you're thinking about growing in places like Alaska, I, I don't live in Alaska, I don't live in a super cold region, is that many of these trees will make it all the way down. Some of them will make it down to negative 50 or even below that. But the trouble is in these particular regions is, do you have a long enough summer? Because the zone that you live in only tells you, and you can look up, if, if you don't know what your zone is, you can simply Google agricultural zone of, and then you could type in your particular zip code. When you type in your zip code, it'll tell you what your what zone you're in, and that will tell you what temperature that your region gets down to. But that only tells you how far down your temperature gets. Some places that are kind of like in the middle of the United States can get super cold in the winter. So they can be a very low zone, not when I say very low, not super low, but they might be down like zone five, which is not super low, but they, but they only get that a couple times a year. But because of that, you still couldn't have a tree that is a zone six or a seven tree, it would die even though it hardly off, it only maybe once a year or every couple of years gets to that temperature. But that being said, if you live in Alaska, there are some varieties that are said to be specifically varieties that are not only cold hardy enough, they may get down to zones three and zone two, but they also are short season varieties because some, many actually varieties for that, 
for that matter, take, they come out in late September, October, almost November. And so those particular varieties that might grow in places like uh, Wisconsin or Michigan or you know, these parts of the United States, they aren't gonna make it in places like certain regions of Alaska that may, they may get really cold or may not even get that cold, but they have a short summer. So that's something you have to think about if you're looking to get varieties for Alaska. Now, one particular variety that can go all the way down to zone one is called September Ruby. But with a name like September Ruby, it means it probably actually becomes totally fresh in September, which means if you live in an area that doesn't, that's gonna be freezing, you know, all the way into August or, or sometime in September, that one might not work for you. But there's two varieties that are said to be some of the best varieties for Alaska. One of them is called Carol, and Carol is an early, very early variety, and because it, it, it comes to fruition very early, it can sometimes make it, even though it's not a zone one, I think it's either a zone two or three, but as a result, it may make it in several parts of Alaska. Another variety that has actually even been grown commercially in Alaska is called Parkland. So if something's grown commercially, you know that means they've had enough success with it that it's actually worth the effort to grow. So look into that, look in those two varieties if you're all the way up in, in Alaska. But one other quick thing to consider, if you want the greatest amount of apples for your time period, in, and you have enough area on your property, you can grow early varieties and late varieties. Early varieties are often not the best for storing. They don't hold over well in cold storage, but that means, hey, maybe sometime in August, you'll already be eating fresh apples from your trees, and they probably won't make it, you know, to October, but it doesn't matter if you have some that come to fruition in September and October, and often some of the later season ones, not always, look them up. Some of them are do really well in cold storage, others do not. But if you have some of those ones that do, hey, those ones will be like, uh, Honeycrisp might be able to, if you pick them at the right time, they might last just six months. Like I said, ash mead kernel, certain times, certain ash meads kernel might make it eight, eight months and the Fuji might make it even a year. So having some varieties that are early, that gets you early fresh varieties, and some of the later varieties that are good in storage might give you fresh apples all year. And even if you don't have ones that'll stay fresh all year, you can dehydrate them, you can put them by your wood stove and just let them, let them dry, or you can have your dehydrator. The other option is you make yourself some applesauce. So apples are just one of the best things for someone who may be into simply gardening, or if you're into homesteading like myself, uh, you might try various different kinds of apples. I wanna share with you about two different websites that might be a benefit to you. I have no connection with them except I bought from one of them because it's in the United States. One of them though is in Canada. It's called hardyfruittrees.ca. I don't live in Canada. That one has great hardy apple trees. The trouble is they're all sold out for 2021. The one in the United States is called St. Lawrence Nurseries. St. St. Lawrence Nurseries.com. I'll have a link down in the description below so you won't want to miss that if you live in some of the cold hardy regions. The great things about us St. Lawrence Nurseries, I gotta say though, their trees can be kind of squirrely, very, very small. I appreciate the work that they do to preserve all these very cold hardy trees and to find out which ones are. And so, but just realize you're not gonna get a, a seven foot tall tree or something like that. You're gonna get a kind of a squirrely tree. Some of them might be a little bigger, but they're typically quite small. But still, you're getting some great trees. Now, if you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me out. Hit the like button, share it with a friend. God bless and have a fantastic day.